In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get rid of all the distractions and simplify a background inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at this photograph and there's a lot of distraction in the background. It's a very busy background and that can really draw the attention away from the subject, particularly when you're working with things like product photography or even portraits. You want to simplify that background as much as possible, bring the viewer's focus into what it is that you're trying to portray in the photograph. And there's a few different techniques that we're going to stack on top of each other inside of Photoshop to do this task right now and I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So the photograph I'm using here I got from Adobe Stock and if you want to try some of the photos from Adobe Stock, there's millions of them, you can get started with the link underneath where you can get 10 free images. Also if you're a photographer, you can have your images in that collection as well by becoming a contributor. It's very easy and I'm going to give you the link underneath where you can sign up, become a contributor, get your photos in front of millions of people and make some extra money. So here we've got this Vesper and we've got all this background which is very busy. I want to simplify this to just a simple wall. Now the first step that you want to do that a lot of people skip over is notice we've got some keystoning in here. And by just kind of fixing the basic lens distortion in this photograph, it's going to make it a lot easier for the rest of the work. So why don't we do that right now and believe it or not the best place to do this is if we go under filter, camera, raw filter. Now under camera raw filter we have this credible tool called upright and if we click here on this little distortion button here this is going to take us into upright. Notice that this grid is appearing. If you click the button here this will make it show and the grid is going to make it a lot easier for you to line things up. And In fact if you look at it notice how this perspective is going off and the reason for that is because the photographer is shooting from a higher angle and has the camera tilted down which is causing this lens distortion. You could fix this by shooting with a tilt shift or keeping the camera more level while shooting. But we can easily fix this. If we go up under upright there's a number of options but the one I'm going to go to here is just a full fix and if we click there notice this fixes most of the issues. However one of the things I'm noticing here is this little bit of tilting there. See that? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the rotate and we're just going to rotate this around until it's nicely aligned. And you know what? That's looking pretty good. I notice there's still a little keystoning going on and we could play around with that. We could manually override some of the things we've got there and just kind of pull it down there. It looks a little better. And at this point here we're looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click OK to apply this. And you'll notice that we've got a little bit of gap up here and up there. Those gaps don't matter at all because we're going to be cloning and healing that area. So the first step that we've just done right now is to just do the basic lens correction in the photo. Step number two is we're just going to patch things up a little bit. I'm not worried about making it seamless. I just want to cover up those areas. So let's do that right now. And of course there's many different ways we could do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this super simple for now. I'm just going to make a selection around here. And let's just make a selection over there. And I'm just going to copy this section. In fact let's do it all the way from the bottom. There we go. From that wall. And I'm just going to hit Control J or Command J on Mac to copy that to a new layer. And all I'm going to do with this now is I'm just going to drag this over and just put it in position. Notice it's not even perfect. In fact, we're going to go here because I don't even want to have that little thing going on there. So we're just going to get rid of that as well. And so what I'm trying to do is just make sure that I'm lining up with those cracks on the wall. That part's important. Don't worry about all these little things. We can fix that later. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to work down here. This is going to be a lot more tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down, select my background layer, and I'm just going to grab this and I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to hit Control J or Command J on Mac to copy that to a new layer. Grab the Move tool and we're just going to pull it down. And now I want to just pull this down even more. So I'm going to hit the Alt or the Option key and it's just going to drag out a copy and I'm going to pull that down. And see what I'm doing here? I'm just patching up these areas right now. 
we're going to come back and we're going to do the cleanup. In fact, what I want to do is I'm going to take some of this and put it over here later. So we're not even going to touch this part because we're going to fix it here first. Excellent. So what we want to do is I'm going to take all of these layers and I want to create a stamp visible layer. So I'm going to select everything. And what that means is I'm going to create a brand new layer that contains all the contents of these layers into one. And it's just going to make it easier without flattening our image. So I'm going to hit shift option command and that would be shift alt control on windows and in E. And then it just creates a layer on top. And this just makes it easier to work in here because some of these tools are going to work really well um, on layers and other ones don't, such as the patch tool. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to do some basic work. We're going to move into the patch tool now. So we're working with the bigger areas first, and then we're going to move down into the small areas. So with our patch tool selected, what we want to do is we're going to make a selection around here because we've got this. Notice this is not a very good... Um, thing here. We want to get rid of the type because that is doubled up. And we also want to kind of smoothen out these colors a little bit. So what we're going to do is now that we've got the patch tool, notice we can change this mode to from normal to content aware. If we're working in content aware, we can sample all layers. When we're working in normal, we can't. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it here. We're not going to sample all layers because we're working on the same layer for now. So I'm just going to pull this over and make sure, see that line in the bricks, that that lines up. And it's just going to start to fade things together. Now the next thing is we want to be very precise here. So we're going to go away from content aware to normal, which is why I did this on the same layer. And we just want to go here. And the reason we're doing it this way is because I want to keep a sharp edge on that wall. Content aware will soften that. And then we release it there. See it's starting to patch it together. Now this is already starting to look quite convincing. Remember, you're looking at this photograph, comparing it to the beginning. The person that's going to be viewing this photo is never going to see the before photo. So there's a lot of things you can get away with. So don't spend too much time trying to fix little areas that no one's going to notice. Focus on the big things. Okay, so obviously we've got a problem with this here. This is not looking very convincing. We're going to go back to our now patch tool here, we're going to make a selection around here. I want to kind of smoothen these areas over and I'm going to go back to content aware for this and I'm just going to drag it into there. And I'm just going to let these kind of merge together a little bit. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of merging in these seams. And the good thing is once you've cleaned up an area, it makes a very good source area to work from. Okay, so let's go there. It's still looking a little weird. And that's starting to look better. We're going to come back on some of these repeating patterns in a little bit. What I want to do here too is I want to get rid of this kind of seam here. So we're going to change this from content aware to normal. We're just going to make a selection around here. I'm going to keep it pretty tight on the left hand side because I don't want to take away too much of that pattern because it's quite good. On the other side though, I'm going to go a little wider because I don't even like a lot of that. And if we've gone over here, we can hold the Alt key and just kind of take away those areas because I kind of like that. That's nice. It gives it a little bit of character. And then we're just going to pull this over a little bit, maybe back this way. And I'm just going to let that go over there. Now we're going to change this patch mode from normal to content aware. And we're just going to pull this over a little bit and see if we can get it to blend in a little better. All right, starting to look good. Let's do one more here. Just gonna grab that. All right, we've got a little cleaning up to do. We're gonna come back to that in a second. Let's go up to the top part here. I wanna kind of just do something with this because this feels a little too abrupt. And see what I'm doing. I'm just using this content aware and I'm just going over here to just kind of blend these areas in. Now this kind of smudging is not bad. I just want to make sure I don't have repeating patterns on here. So for things that are going to be obvious like those little cracks, you can get rid of those. Yeah, and if it doesn't look good, just redo a certain bit. And you can see what we're starting to do there. Notice that this is a repeating pattern. 
This is looking very obvious, so we want to just kind of get that over there. And you can see I'm doing a lot here with the patch tool, and it's working really well. Other things that work well too are the clone stamp tool. So let's grab our clone stamp here. And what we're going to do now is we can create a new layer on top. The clone stamp does work with different layers. So we're going to do current layer and below. And let's make this a little bigger. And what I'm trying to do here is I just want to go in and get rid of these obvious areas that are repeating. So I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option. I'm going to create a sample. And then just tap to, to draw. See what we're doing here? And we're just cleaning up some of these areas that were a little too obvious. Nice. And if we wanted, we could blend this in too by grabbing the lighter area. Maybe drop the opacity down to about 50. It's just a little extra tip here. And if we grab that and make it a little bigger, grab on here, go over there, and see how it can just start to blend some of these tones in a little bit if it feels a little too abrupt. Okay, let's turn the opacity back up to 100, and we want to just kind of just paint in here. So we can hit the Alt of the Option key and click to sample, go right over there where it's looking good, get it precise, and then just click once to apply it. Beautiful. And this is starting to look quite convincing. If this pattern here is looking a little too random, we can do the same thing here. Just sample from over here. I'm going to Alt or Option, click over here. And then we can just start to paint some of this reselecting over here. Now, if this area is starting to look a little too soft, which sometimes happens when you're cloning, we can sharpen it. So I'm selecting that layer. I'm going to choose Filter, Sharpen. And now I'm going to go down to my unsharp mask here. There we go. And notice how that's just popping that texture a little bit. So now it doesn't look soft and cloned like it was. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to merge these two layers into each other. Control E. So if you find some of these areas you're not quite liking, all you're going to do is just repeat the same steps that I've shown you and just keep building it up. And don't forget, you can also bring in a document from somewhere else and you can clone from that, from that separate layer as well. So you're not stuck to just the textures within the photograph you're using. All right, so the next thing I want to do now is I want to just block out the other side here. And this is going to be really easy. On my top layer, I'm just going to make a selection around here. And we're going to copy this to a new layer. Control J or Command J on Mac. We've copied that. And all I'm going to do is just drag it over. And we're going to have this lining up right there. Using the arrow keys to nudge it. Look at that. So that's also one of the advantages why we straightened this up. It's making it a lot easier to line these up. With the keystoning, it would have been a lot more difficult. Now, I'm noticing there's some inconsistencies here, and we'll get to those. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a layer mask, and now we're going to grab a brush. A nice large brush is good, maybe not that large, but one of the things you want to do is make sure that the hardness is turned all the way down. It's nice and soft. On that mask, we want to be painting with black at 100%. In fact, let's make that just a little bit bigger, and we're just going to blend it in. Now we've got some areas, obviously, that we're going to fix here. But see how we're just blending this in nicely? In fact, we might just go right completely over. There we go. And hit the X key. Now we're going to be painting with white and just kind of just bringing some of this back. And if you wanted to change the opacity, we could. But first of all, let me get rid of that seam. Definitely don't want that there. And now if we change the opacity, you know, we can start to just kind of blend some of these things in a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and I'm just going to merge them in together again. And then I'm going to grab our patch tool. And I'm going to get rid of this first. I don't like that big piece there. We could keep it if we wanted. But in this case, I've decided we're going to get rid of it. So I could just drag this over here. Just make sure that everything is aligning. Notice that this is snapping, and that's making things quite difficult. So I'm just going to hit the Escape key. What we need to do is we're going to go under the View here. And then if we go to the Snap, we're just going to turn that off. 
now when we go over here, it's going to make it easier to line that up. See, we're trying to line those up. And before it was snapping in there and it was making it too difficult to do that. And see, we just kind of got rid of that. Looks quite nice. Yeah, we got rid of some of that seam there, but no big deal. Let's go back to our clone stamp. And this is where we're going to do our touch up. Select it there. We're going to go in there. We need that seam. Tap. And we've got that. It's looking good. So down here, we might want to use some more of that dark wool. So we're just going to hit the Alt or the Option key. Tap on there to select it. And we're just going to line up the top of that wall there. And just paint. And I'm just sampling some of this. And notice how I'm varying my sample from different places. So it doesn't look too obvious. Okay, let's see where we're at now. If we look at it before, we've got all these distractions. And after, we've completely got rid of the distractions. So one of the things you might have noticed is I'm using a combination there of, first of all, just copying layers, moving them around to just kind of fill up all the gaps. Then I'm jumping in, I'm using the patch tool for the larger areas to copy those over because what that does is it preserves the texture a little bit. If we do too much of the clone stamp, it starts to look too spotty or too blotchy. And then I'm using the clone stamp to come along later on and just kind of fill in those little areas. And by the way, if you're not sure how to use the clone stamp, I'll give you a link underneath where I have a tutorial where I go through all the options available inside of the clone stamp tool. So anyway, I have a question for you guys. Do you like these kind of tools? What do you like best? Do you like the clone stamp or are you a content aware person? Drop a comment underneath and let me know. Now, if you're creating photographs and you're submitting them to stock, uh, and things like that. You want to kind of clone out those backgrounds and just simplify these photos, get them nice and clean, and they'll have a lot more effect and a lot more punch. Once again, the link is underneath if you want to sign up to become a contributor to Adobe Stock. So if you like this, hit that like button right now. Oh, by the way, if you're not a subscriber to the Photoshop Cafe and you like these kind of tutorials, hit the subscribe button right now. And I've also had a few subscribers say, hey, we haven't got the notifications. And that's because that little bell next to there, the way YouTube works right now, you have to also hit the bell to get the notifications. So if you have subscribed or you haven't subscribed yet, hit that bell and then you're going to get the new tutorial notification as soon as I put it out. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.